if you only be honest with yourself, how many of you remember the way you used to be? No, I'm, 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 I'm serious. How many of you really remember how you used to be? And if you only be honest with yourself, you ought to pause now and thank God that you're no longer that person. Because many of us were what the old people used to call a piece of work. And I shudder at the thought, I shudder at the thought of where Bless him now with our hand claps. Now I want you to clap like you did last night when you were down on the road in Boston. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. 
And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. Thank you, Sam. And their net break. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. Amen. Amen. Today's subject, when the nets break. Amen. When the when the nets break. Thank you, greeters. When when this happens, it's only one or two things that can come of this. Either something good or something bad. <laughs> The fifth chapter, as you recall last Sunday, Jesus uses a borrowed boat to teach from the boat to the multitudes that have gathered there at the lake of Genesaret. in particular belong to Simon, also called Peter. Right. They were fishermen. That's right. But on this particular time, they're unsuccessful. Uh -huh. And the fifth chapter has very little to do, watch this, with skills. How many of you in here got skills. Okay. Yes, you do. Pastor Wadil, what is that exactly? How do you define skill? Skill is the ability to do something real good. All right. Now let me ask again, how many of you got skills? <laughs> sure. We know from reading verse, well, reading chapter five, that we are dealing with fishermen. Yeah. And no doubt, they were good at what they do. They had skills. Mark, who writes chapter five, Listen to how he phrased it. He called them fishermen. I remember when I was coaching, we would play some schools, and they would whip us so bad, they'd take us back to 12 years of slavery. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I analyzed it, what, what basically what, what, what it was. Uh -huh. See, the difference is, I was coaching kids that played football. Uh -huh. The team we played had football players. Oh, yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> Y'all will get that one tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> they were fishermen. Uh -huh. Not June bugs standing on the shore of the lake with a piece of bacon, a string, and a bamboo pole. They were fishermen. This is, they were professionals. And a professional is someone who does something, that's their livelihood, and they are paid well for it. All right. But we can take a lesson and learn something from Peter. All of us in here, yeah. 
at some point has had a Peter experience. Right. Yeah. What, Pastor, what exactly is this Peter experience? It is when we doubt before we do. Right. You remember when you were little? You wanted to go outside and play? All the kids out there playing, you hear them. They out there having a good time. Ring around the roses, pocket full of plums. Come on. All right. Yeah. They were out there doing all kind of fun activities. Sir. You were stuck in the house and you wanted to go out there, but you doubted before you actually did. Uh -huh. Because you, you, you went to mama with doubt. Mama. No, you're going to say no. <laughs> but you doubted right. before you did the do. And that's what, that's what Peter, yeah, that's what, that's what happened. And he doubts after Jesus tells him to launch out to the, the deep. Instead of being obedient, doubt sets in. If you believe that you are going to fail at what you do, you might need to go back and rethink your operation. But you have to have a plan. Because if you don't, if you, if you, I think it's going like this, if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. Right. I know what happened last night. You were unsuccessful at your profession. All right. But we cannot allow, watch this, we cannot allow recent history to dictate future blessings. Yeah. 
don't taste like them bad greens. <laughs> but when you fail at your profession, watch this. Don't allow recent history to dictate future blessings. Right. Initially, Peter makes a statement, Simon Peter, that he makes a statement that if the statement, watch this, takes precedence over obedience, then you come to readily accept failure. All right. He said, launch out, Jesus says, launch out into the deep. Instead of him saying, yes, Lord, he leads with an excuse. Right. Don't you hate folk that always lead with an excuse? Before they even get something out of their mouth, they lead with an excuse. You telling them why we can do it. They haven't tried it yet, but they're already telling you it can't be done. Can I suggest something to you? Get, starting today, Get as far away as north is from south that people that always talk that negative talk. Because let me tell you what's going to happen, baby. It's going to roll off on you if they catch you at a weak moment. Right, right. What happens when you start to accept and fail? I just told Kenna in the back while we were in the back. I said, I, when I was coaching, All right. after a loss, how many of you hate to lose? Oh yeah. After a loss, when do you bowl? You hate to lose. When you when you when you lose and you're coaching and the loss hurts you worse than it does the players. Uh -huh. Now we go to these outlining towns, Stephanie, and we get a, a 70 piece put on us. All right. 70 to nothing. Wow. And on the ride back to Houston, football players laughing and giggling. My chest hurt because I just got humiliated out of town. Yes, sir. But when you get to a point where you're okay with losing, you got an issue. Don't, don't, don't this bother you to let somebody who's supposed to be just as good as you beat you 70 to nothing? You mean to tell me you're, you're actually okay with it? And I'm riding home, I'm about my veins about to bust out my head because I can't understand for the life of me why you're okay with losing. Yeah. Well, if you start accepting losing, then you readily start accepting failure. Yeah. But, but when it's your job, yes. when it's your profession, when it's your livelihood, when it's the way that you feed your family, failure is not an option. I feel Peter has some concerns. How many of you got concerns? I feel Peter has some concerns that, that next day. Because you got to understand that he had been out there all night long. That's what he said. He said, we've been out here all night long. And we ain't caught nothing. I'm real familiar. I'm real familiar, Martin, with Psalms 30, verse 5. I, I get it. I, it says, weeping men do it all night. But joy cometh in the morning. Not all the time, though. That's right. I go to bed sometimes with issues, and I wake up, those same issues ain't gone. Right. Right. Come on, somebody talk back to me. Right. Right. Sometimes the stuff that you
you sleep on don't go away in the morning. I don't care how much crown royal you drink, that problem will be there in the morning. First one that got a pink light bill, yellow water bill. Right. 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 We have to understand that that saying a lot of times is true. Yes, misery does love company. You're not the first one that have had the pink slip blue. That it seemed like you are. You have been on an exercise bike. You paddling, 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 fast, 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 like popo after you. And when you look around, you're in the same place you've been in for the past 30 minutes. Well, when you're at a crossroad, do you do? What, 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 what do I? What, what do we do when we really don't know what to do? And everything you tried failed. This is what I do. Uh -huh. I fish. Mm -hmm. I'm good at what I do. Mark called them fishermen. Right. But what do you do when everybody is looking at you to succeed and all you got is failure? Steps getting a shorter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I look at my mama now. I remember how she used to be. And now, reality sets in. And you know what the old people used to tell you? Keep saying good morning. Yeah. When you hit 40, a new pain in a different place every day. I've been out here all night. And I got to go home a failure. But in spite of your failure, now this is Mary, 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 Mary Allen, this is this is my spot. Yes. This is this is my spot. I, this is where I fish, y'all. This is boom, this is it. Right here. This is my spot, and I ain't called a tadpole. Ah. And I got to go home empty-handed. But in spite of the indiscretions and the shortcomings, something on the inside tells us to go ahead. That's right. That's right. Do you ever had to work and your check when you got it wasn't what you thought it would? Yeah. 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 But you keep on going. Yeah. You know what I you know what else I see when I when I read verse five? He says, Master, we've been out here all night long and have taken nothing. You know what I sense? And you've been guilty. I have too. I sense a give up spirit. Oh my. Yeah. yeah. After fishing all night long, he ready to pack it up and go home. Yeah. It's hard. Kids, Kevin, kids don't understand why they can't get the $250 tennis shoe. Right. They can't understand <laughs> they can't wear their jeans, not with these holes on them. Uh -huh. Hell, that's all we had. It's, it's difficult to, keep, to, 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 to re reply to a kid why we can't do this. Right. You remember? Remember how happy you were the, the day before school started because you had some new clothes? You couldn't even sleep. Yes. <laughs> to go home and explain to the little Simon and little Samantha <laughs> that daddy ain't got nothing. It's Christmas morning and there's nothing under the tree All right. because you had to pay mortgage and rent. Well, it's hard to explain. Yeah. That on this day you gotta go home empty handed. You got miles to feed, bills to pay, and watch this. At home, the grease popping in the skin. At home, the cornmeal is ready. With the Tony Satchers and the Slap Your Mama and all of that, it's ready. Yes, and you looking behind Peter to see how much he got. You show up the next day, and all you got is empty nets and excuses. Man, if you call yourself the head of household, excuses will never put food on your table. That's right. That's right. But I see, I see the realization of, 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 of Peter's uh, initiative. 
I know you ain't got nothing to show for it, and you're supposed to be good at what you do. You know how, let me tell you how people try to cut you, especially the preacher. You are, they are ask you for some money, and you tell them no, and they'll say, you call yourself a preacher. <laughs> You're supposed to be, you're supposed to be good at what you do. Some of y'all in here can cook. Some of y'all can cook. Some of y'all will burn water. <laughs> but this is, this is Jesus talking, I'm closing. ever been at a crossroads where you just had to press pause and say, I need to hear a word from the Lord? Right. Because I'm, I'm, I'm at a crossroads and I'm standing here wondering which way to go. I'm sometimes myself like that song in the color purple. I need you to speak to me. just not a title. Dad is a testimony. David, I, I applaud you about your son. I, I, I remember what I was told what happened and all that, but I told you to just hang in there. <laughs> Personally, sometimes you just got to wait. My son was born, a lot of people don't know this. My son was born, his mama wouldn't let me see him. But I knew that was my boy. Right. Right. And my dad talked to my dad, I was crying. Right. I almost said, I'm crying because I want to be with my son. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. I want to be with your boy. And I went to my dad, my pastor. He said to me, son, that's a noble thing. Instead of running away, you're running too. Uh, and he said this, and it, and it was prophetic. <clears throat> you ever had listened to prophecy? Yeah. He said to me, I remember like it was yesterday. He said, just wait. Uh, just wait. Just wait. <laughs> they that wait. All right. All right. He said to me, just wait. It's going to come a time she's going to be blowing you up to come get it. Yes. How many of you know prophecies sometimes come true? Yes. This is probably one of the greatest examples of failure. But you know what? In my closing, watch this. He listens. Yes. Right. He listens. Sure. You ever got yourself in a pickle because you didn't listen? Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. We got to be very careful about following all the advice we're told. Yes, sir. You gotta be very careful about buying into what comes behind, girl, if I was you. Yeah. What if he would have accepted failure and would not listen to the voice of Jesus? You know, sometimes we get into trouble. We start listening and taking advice of people who are worse shape than we are. And ladies, ladies, if you're going to find out one day that the mouth will say anything. <laughs> T 
K. Soul says, try me, I'll be a gentleman tonight. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> but in my closing, watch this. And as I told you all this on last week, when you get to a nevertheless point in your life, because you don't want to be a failure, and that what you have been trying to do ain't working, Listen to somebody who's been there and done that. You know what happens when he listens to Jesus? But y'all gotta understand this, and I'm done. Jesus not only knows where the fish are, he's responsible for them fish being in the sea. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> so with that being said, I anticipate my blessing. When I fail to be at what I'm supposed to be good at, I anticipate the blessing. All right. Pastor, I'm going to leave you with this. Trust me on this one. Blessings don't always come after obedience. When you're obedient, you get an extra cookie in the lunch kit. When you're obedient, you get to go on a field trip to the zoo. Yeah. yeah. When you're obedient, you're obedient, somebody will just hand you something and you'll ask what, what is this for? And say, just take it. Yeah. Just take it. That's right. And you learn that it's a blessing. Yeah. When you're obedient, you'll find an old five dollar bill on some jeans that you're in wash and you just broke it in the Ten Commandments. Yeah. When you're obedient. So what I'm going to do. It said that there was a drop of fish. All right. All kinds of fishes. So much so, until I have not read this anywhere else in the Bible, that they had so many that the nets start breaking. Right. How many of you here want a net breaking blessing to come your way? <laughs> Thank you. 
to do the right thing. 